Welcome to the History Law Channel. Yuri is here today and we're just by the Tower of London and not far from Tower Bridge and we're going to be talking about this strange thing behind me, this, this column behind me. This was the entrance to the first underground railway in the world and nowadays it's a forgotten piece of Victorian engineering. Let's tell you all about it, shall we? Welcome to London. Running between Tower Hill on the north side of the river through to Vine Lane on the south side. In 1868, no one really wanted to take on the construction of this subway due to difficulties and the massive expense that dogged the construction of Brunel's Thames Tunnel some 30 years earlier. But enter 24-year-old James Henry Greathead. He said that £9,400 would cover the required works and construction got underway in 1869. This gave Greathead a chance to test his new theories on tunnelling and perfect the Greathead Shield, which would go on to build the first electric underground railway, the City and South London, which is now part of the Northern Line. But this tunnel was only seven feet in diameter. It took just under a year to finish, and the previous Thames Tunnel took 18. The Tower Subway also pioneered cast iron linings, as opposed to the brick ones that were usually used. It may have been an engineering success, it was, however, a commercial disaster. Each car could take 12 passengers and it took about 70 seconds to go from the north to the south side and vice versa. Add that to the time it took to walk down the stairs or use the lift to go down and then come back up the other side, it took about seven or eight minutes. In that time, well, most people could have walked across as well. A few technical mishaps too with the four horsepower steam engine and then lack of customers meant the company soon went into receivership, meaning the end of the world's first ever tube railway. The tunnel was then turned into a walkway for pedestrians, the cable car and lifts being replaced by gas lights and spiral staircases. Some 20,000 people a week used the dank, dark and claustrophobic tunnels. They paid a half penny each way for the privilege. In 1894, the toll-free tower bridge was opened, making the tower subway redundant. The tunnel was sold to the London Hydraulic Power Company for hydraulic tubes and water mains. The tunnel was badly damaged in the Second World War by a nearby German bomb which landed in the Thames, although the tunnel lining was never penetrated. It's now used to carry telecommunication cables and is not open to the public. The only evidence of the Thames subway you can see these days is this little column behind me that housed the northern entrance. But sadly, even this isn't the original. This was replaced in the 1920s. Thank you very much for watching today. We do hope you enjoy these videos. And if you do, please hit subscribe. And if you want to know when videos are uploaded, there's a notification bell just down below. And if you want to know what we do outside of these videos, please go to historylord.co.uk, see about one of my walking tours of London, or have a look down below and see about James's YouTube channel that's called Last Line Films. Thank you for watching today. Subways. Now, where have I seen Subway before? Hmm? Nope. It's gone. See you soon.